so here's my slats. I have three rows of these. You'll notice that they're not 16 feet long like my greenhouse. So I bought a bunch of these to fuse them together. Basically, it's almost like a big staple. So I'm gonna center it up on here and take a hammer and hammer it in to try to fuse them together. You can see that I have six of these. So there's three slats on each side. So I have a total of, I guess, 12 boards and I'm gonna fuse each together in pairs of two so that we have six 16 foot boards instead of instead of uh instead of 12 eight foot boards so i figure i probably could have tried to center it up on the on the middle stud the best I, the middle rafter as best as i can but there's no guarantee that these are going to end up on the center so i'm putting this fuse in here just so that you know i don't have to try to do anything crazy so let's see how this works i'm not sure if this is the appropriate use of these but this is what i'm doing with them so Hopefully it works out. We're gonna have it. Try not to split the wood. See if I can get it nice and snug together, best I can. Push on it a little bit. Probably use my heavy hammer for this. Let's see how this does. Do you want your mallet? Yeah, I'm gonna get the mallet. Brought in some reinforcements. I'm going to put this here just to help evenly spread out the smash and so I don't deform the, deform it. Let's see, try to keep it close together. It's as close as I'm gonna get them, looks like. Let's see how this works. <laughs> Ends are on pretty good. That is cool, Jeff. Let's get the middle, middle a little better. Did you make this up or did you find this out on your own? Uh, or did you find this somewhere online? I saw it on some websites and stuff. I'm just not sure if this is the right use for this, but <laughs> it's gonna have to do. That is not coming off. No, it's not. So when I screw it on there, it'll be silver side down. Oh, careful. It's flexible. But so if it's on this side, see if it sides down, if you push a little bit, should be okay. I mean, you probably are supposed to do both sides, but it's gonna be supported every two feet, if you think about it. So I'm not overly worried. Wanna we'll try one out? How about we, bring it over and or you can do a test watch this okay all right so we know the absolute maximum that these are going to be apart are two feet one two About two feet. I can live with that. Yes. What do you think? I, I like it. I really do. Okay. Hey, go ahead. Is your step ladder in the right spot? I think so. There you go. Control where it goes. How you doing there? Is it right in the middle? Yes. Is it good? How sweet is that? Perfect. It really is nice. All right. That's awesome. These aren't long enough. Are they really not? Yeah. Crap. Yeah. I'll be back. I gotta get an inch and a half to two inch screws. You don't think we'll have enough screws? I know I won't have enough screws. I'll have enough for like one or two of these. I can go look in the garage. I always got screws somewhere. I'm going to screw for here. 
I'm gonna just move over so you can let go. This, I'm not sure how this is gonna work because I can't screw it through metal. Well, why don't you just avoid this one and do that one? Good idea. Good idea. I'm gonna have to do them all anyway. I have enough screws to get them reasonably tied down for now. Look at that. How cool is that? Yeah. Cool? Let's go to the end here. Exciting. What do you think? Love it. Look at that. So we have one of these up and on each side we're going to have one on the bottom, one in the middle, and one at the top. And what I mean by the top is not the top of the ridge board, but the top of the rafter because that's where the corrugated is going to come to a point and then there's going to be an additional piece that sits flat on top of the, on top of the ridge board. I originally thought I was going to be able to use inch and a quarter screws to tie down these slats but as it turns out uh, I needed two inch screws I have them just not even close to enough I bought the wrong box so I'm gonna have to go back to the store and buy a different box that's okay so, you live at Home Depot yep so they know me I'll uh I'm not sure even sure if I have the receipt but they'll do an even swap most likely okay so today I'm gonna try to get three different things done first we started hanging one slat just to see how it fits. So we have to finish bolting this one down and hang the rest of them up. We need to bolt the entire structure down to the concrete with tap cons. And the third thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna be putting these hurricane clips on each of these rafters here. I did some thinking and there is legitimately only one pocket hole screw holding this thing on. So if we get a good wind gust, that could really that could really break. So I was being a little hard headed about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on and I even bought the recommended screws for them. So I'm not gonna be using deck mates. I'm getting, a, I guess, a little more official with this. Yeah, gonna, look at you. I know, I'm gonna use the screws that I was told to use. If you look these things up on Home Depot's website or whatever store you choose, you'll note it, you'll see that this screw configuration is a little different. Uh, normally if this was a house or whatnot, there would be a cap on top of this wall, but I didn't put one because I didn't feel like it. So the hurricane clip's actually going to screw into, into this, into the top of this frame and also into the stud a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you'll see, a, and, it, and it fits. So you can see that it's not sticking up, so my roof's not going to get caught on it or anything. So it's going to work out great. So, uh. I have 14 of these to do. I didn't buy one for the corner over there. Obviously that, would, that wouldn't even work out. There's no way I could possibly put a clip on the corner. So that's that. I have 18 rafters, but I'm only gonna be putting 14 of these up because it has to have that space necessary to get that connection on. All right, so I'm gonna start with that. Okay, so this is what the hurricane clip looks like when it's all bolted down. I don't know if you have to use all of the screws, but I did. So there's 10 of them. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and do the rest of these now. Okay. And uh, yep, let's get to it. All right, so uh, we're out of daylight again. So we're gonna stop now and I'm also out of screws. So <laughs> next time I make sure I buy enough screws. Uh, so for more than one reason, that's it for the day. Two, three, four left. Cool. Let's go inside, I'm freezing. Well, this is our second attempt at putting up the hurricane clips. Uh, I ran out of screws last time. It's about, I think, 10 degrees colder today than it was yesterday. So we're just gonna finish this up and then work on as many slats as we can until we start to get cold. So we're gonna go ahead and get to it.
that. Okay, so that's all the hurricane clips. Uh, it's cold, so it is and, absolutely yeah. freezing right now. And the wind is pretty bad, so I don't know if I want to get all the way up there just to freeze to death. No, I yep. can't stay out here anymore. I'm freezing. All right, let's go. We're done for the day. I'm gonna put this down since the wind blew it over yesterday. Just leave this out here for now. All right, so today we're going to be doing some of the siding. And uh, these sheets come uh, in four by eight. This is T111. Uh, it comes untreated, so you have to paint it, stain it, or whatever. So what I'm doing is, since it's four feet wide already, I'm gonna be cutting it three in three foot sections. So it's tongue and groove. So this side, I guess, is the groove side, and that side's the tongue side, so it fits together. And what I need to do is, since I want this to be three feet tall, and I want it to be pretty with the with the uh, slats going up and down, I have to cut it into three foot strips. Uh, I am going to lose a two foot strip on the end, but that's okay. So maybe I'll find some other use for that, but right now, this is what I'm gonna be doing. So I'm gonna get to it. I have my uh, chalk line already done here. So I'm not good at cutting these at all. So hopefully this works out well. So, and since this is gonna be the top of the next piece, you know, I don't get a lot of, uh, I don't get a lot of do-overs here. All right, let's do it. Okay. That was pretty good. Kinda had, this piece I was using as almost like a <laughs> catwalk, I guess. Okay. That was a good cut. All right, so that worked out well. So we can go ahead and cut the next one. All right, Jeff, good job. You're making a trap? Yeah, of the floor. Is it it's trying to eat, it's trying to eat their food over there? We'll make a trap. You're gonna catch a squirrel? Yeah. <laughs> Look what the real nut me and Jeffrey found. Oh, you guys are really trying to trap that we're, squirrel. We're making a squirrel trap. Alright. Alright, let's see. Okay. Can I take this and move this? Cool. Yeah, sure. It's not going to matter. Because I'm cutting this one on this side next. Here we go. It'll still work, but I need to get another one. Is it, is it on there? Yep. Maybe we'll get a metal one for Christmas. That'd be a good thing. You know what I mean? That's a good idea. Metal speed square, so it doesn't happen. Oh, I've had this one for like, what, eight years now? Me well. no. I'm you're on. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to do a trick. Good one. I was going to have you uh, move those back on the clip. Oh, hold on, I'm not done moving it. Right there. Thanks. Yep. All right, let's see the match up.
Can I drop it? It's perfect. Yeah. Here, let's bring these to the concrete area. This is what they're going to look like. Okay, so that's eight. Alright, just wanted to see. This is pretty cool. So this is just tongue and groove right here, how it fits in? Yeah. That's really neat. Just kind of lay on top of each other. So, this is one side of the greenhouse. These are four feet wide by three feet tall. So four times four is 16, which is the length of our greenhouse. So uh, we're gonna do this to two more boards and that'll be the two sides. And then, uh, and then uh, the back of the greenhouse is 12 feet long. So that's one and a half of the, one and a half boards. So that'll be three of these. So three of these together or 12 feet. And the front's gonna be a little funny because the front has the actual storm door. So we're gonna have to cut that one to fit. That's okay. So I don't know how that's gonna end up yet. So, but she'll have plenty of painting to do. And then one of these days I'll put the storm door on and then I'll know exactly how close these need to get to it. I can't wait. The painting will be in the garage probably on a cold day with the burner going. More than likely. Okay, let's do it again. All right. This is pretty siding, you know what I mean? We could even save this for the chicken coop. I like you that. You know, because we're going to be using the same stuff. Okay. So. Sounds great. Yeah. All right. So, we have all the pieces cut for the sides and the back. Uh, <laughs> okay. Jeffrey's so, got his plane out. This side is the one that's going to be a little different. So, we're cutting, we're cutting these into four. These are four feet wide by default. So you see how it's going to come all the way out to here. And then we have this tiny little gap right here. So I'm going to have to custom fit one a size here and probably the same exact size over here. See, you got to be careful because every board has one tongue and groove. So if I cut a piece, oh boy, <laughs> if I cut a piece, if I cut a piece vertically, cause I need the tongue side and has going to have a flat side over here. This, the other piece is going to have a flat side and a, and a groove side. So that might work out perfect where I literally just split them up because it would be nice to have a flat, a flat edge up against the door here. So and not a tongue or a tongue or a groove. So this might actually just work out to be perfect. But long story short, we could take one final board and cut it in two. And uh, and half of it is going to go on this side. The other half is going to go on this side. And the center area is where I have to custom fit the last piece. All right, so today I have 16 pieces of siding that Jeff cut out for me. And I'm gonna try to get all of this done. The weather's not the nicest anymore, so we just have to go with it. It's somewhat uh, sunny out, so if this doesn't dry up, we'll have to move them into the garage with the wood burner to finish drying. But I have high hopes for today, so I'm gonna get going with this. And hopefully we can get these dried up and hang on the greenhouse soon.
All right, so it's all done. Check this out. One gallon of paint. Is that amazing? I thought I was gonna have to get a little bit more, but I made it work with this and a roller. And we were able to get the tops on the little sides, top and bottom, just so extra defense against other weather elements. We're gonna put this in the garage, let this dry for a few days, and this will be ready when we want to uh, hang up the siding for the greenhouse. All right, not bad. All right, so I got all the hurricane clips on now. So now I'm gonna finish putting up the slats. So the first ones are easy. I'm gonna have to do some measuring for the middle and the top should be easy also, minus the part that it's all the way up there. <laughs> so, all right, well, we're gonna get to it. I have everything I need here. Uh, and so I'm gonna start by just finishing this one up. Uh, the reason I didn't get that one up all the way is because we ran out of screws. I have enough, but not even enough for this one board, so we'll start with these. And then we decided painting the siding was a little bit more important before yeah, getting all these yeah. up. I have to let that dry. So, we have a beautiful day for this. This is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See, this one's already done. This one's done already from when I tacked it up. Now the middle's gonna be a little different. I'm gonna have to get a drill out for that because I have to drill through the metal plate first so I can get the screw in. The screw's not gonna go through the metal plate. So this one's gonna be a little different. So there's a steel plate in here. I have to get through that before I plan on getting through the wood. So I know this isn't perfectly centered. I'm not overly worried about that. I'm just gonna try to come right through here. If I, if I try drilling and screwing right next to this, it's just going to simply snap off. So that's why I'm just going to go straight through the seam right here. Okay, this that. There we go. Awesome. This is like a multi-bit. It cuts or allegedly drills through anything, except concrete. That's pretty cool. Handled the metal pretty well. Where do I put that? Switch bits real quick. Okay. I got some screws. All right. It's one. Takes a little bit of oomph to go through that metal still. So. Got it. Awesome. All right, I was worried about that. That worked out. So each one of these slats that we put up, you're gonna do every single rafter? Yes. Oh, yes, you I build will. your house with bricks. I build my house with sticks. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be a decent amount of weight on these things if they're holding snow and whatnot. No, no, it's good. Yeah. Spent all this time. Glad I remember my bet. And money. <laughs> Okay, so we got the first one up. So just trying to think of a little bit of strategy. I have to hang the next one exactly in the middle. So I think for temporary, we're gonna put it up on the roof and let it slide down and get held by the one that's that's uh, already permanently secured. And then we could get up there, I could get up there with a clamp or something, clamp one side and then go on the other, to get it just close, and then go on the other side and, uh, and permanently secure it. The thing is, is, uh, I'll sit up there, Jeff, and just hold it if you want. Yeah, no, why would you do that? You've you done it before. Clamp. Yeah, I've done it before. <laughs> I don't know. I, do you want to get stuck up there if you don't have to? I could just get a clamp. I have no it's, problem. It's not doing like it. a ridge beam where it, you have to hold it. You know, it's it's different. But either way, the middle. I'm gonna mark the middle of uh, of the both ends of, of the rafters and the mid and the middle rafter. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to to make sure it's in the middle on the middle ridge beam. So that's gonna be tough. I might, I might just uh, mark the outer, where the outer edges have to be or something and stay within the lines. I'm not entirely sure yet, but we're gonna wing it and uh, we're gonna see what works. So first we need to get one of these slats up there and held on by the one that's already secure. Okay. These do end up being a little bit longer than I hoped for, slightly. So I'm gonna have to come back here with my flush saw. Oh yeah, that's gonna bother Jeff. To trim that off. Well, and the siding won't, uh, the siding material probably won't fit on all that well if I don't. Jeff's gonna lose sleep at night with that one. 
<laughs> oh, relax. I say lift it up. Okay. Here we go. See? Okay, hold on. Work it. How? Okay, stay there. Stay there. Don't move. It's heavy. Push. I got it. I'm not worrying about the monster. Keep pulling. Go. Yeah. Good. Oh. Jimmy. Okay, cool. Second. Okay, 77 and three quarter, help me remember. 77 what? Three quarter. So I marked the middle of this rafter and also marked the middle of this wood. So you're gonna have to push these two together, line them up while I drill down from the top, okay? Okay. Oh, Jerry, just Jerry just got shot. Okay, that's lined up. All right, so now that we centered up the middle, this is flush now, before it was bowed. So I didn't put a screw in this corner because I wanted that corner to move still. And now, I can permanently secure that down. Do the middle first, it'll probably really help. Yeah. Okay. 
So I'm glad I did the middle first because this came way off up here. So this is pretty bowed. We're gonna fix that now. It's a lot easier to fight on the end than it is to fight more towards the middle. There we go. Now it'll be easier to do the rest of these. Okay, so we're done with the slats. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap con this down to the concrete uh, foundation I gave it. And I have a lot of them. So I'm going to uh, be able to do two per bay, so to say. I'll just space them out. And then with any luck, that'll be a ton of support. So I have a concrete bit and some black electric tape. And I believe, look on the inside of the box, I need that bit should be five thirty seconds of an inch, and it is. So this is going to be the pilot pilot hole bit for the tap cons. Cool. And then also, since I have to get through wood first, I need to pull out my five thirty seconds drill bit, wherever that is. It's this guy here. Daisy's in the woods. Hey Daisy, and Daisy. So I got these two. Now, cool trick I'm gonna do is I don't want to ruin the tip of my bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of electrical tape. I'm going to do, since I don't want this bit to dig into the concrete, I'm going to mark where I need to stop when I'm drilling down. So right here. That's so, a really good idea. Yeah. Is that a known trick? I think so. <laughs> so there you have it. So when I'm drilling, I know when I get to that black electrical tape, I need to stop so I don't hit the concrete underneath. So I'm just gonna go through and just pop two holes in every bay and I'm gonna come back through with the concrete bit and go even farther down. Sorry. It's on. I watch. Yeah. See that? Pretty that cool, should be right? through the through the wood, but not. See, I could yeah. I could actually hear a thud when I did that. Cool. Uh, this is a method of my madness. I'm not trying to hit the cinder block if I could help it. So I'm going uh, I'm going where the concrete is, preferably. All right. So. Give that a rest. It's a concrete bit. Let's see how far we have to go down. So might as well go ahead and open this now. Jimmy, these are going into the concrete. Wow. Pretty crazy, right? Wow. We want to make it really right. secure into the ground. Drill a hole quarter deeper than anchor embedment. Well, let's see how far that is. So it should give us an idea. Which means I need to get in there. You know, it makes sense that I have to get in there the whole width of this screw. Because that's how far down it needs to go. I said about a quarter inch. So I'm going to do the same thing. Get my electrical tape here. Don't really want to drill if I don't have to. A drill? Yeah. <sighs> what is that? So, tape? just gonna guesstimate. Yeah, buddy. This is electrical tape, I'm, but I'm not using it for electrical right now. I'm using it as a helper to let me know when I could stop drilling. Okay. Okay. See that now, Jimmy? Now I know when to stop. Okay. It's gonna be Let's see cool. it work. Wow, okay, that worked. It's 
a little loud, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's not. No? <laughs> no, 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 no. So here I have a hex driver. I know you could use a flathead, but that's tough in my opinion. These are difficult to get in sometimes. Woo! All right. It's working nicely. Yeah, I like the way this is going, huh? Do, so I want to line up all four of them. Oh, just right here. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Today we're going to be putting up the siding here. These are two of the pieces. First thing I want to do is get everything connected up, see how it looks all the way across. It's looking pretty nice. Yeah, it is. This is really exciting. All right, let's go get the other ones. Yep. I'm going to start with this piece, obviously, and uh, this one can be a little tricky because I have to make sure it's flush so that it goes straight all the way down. If it's angled up or something like that, then the next piece won't fit all too well. Uh, easiest way to do it, I think, is to come here and try to get it flush as closest to the bottom as I can get. <laughs> you hold it there for me? Yeah. Thanks. This is a two inch deck mate. Uh, I picked green because it's green in color. So I thought it looked nice. That was a good idea. Yeah. So this one I do want to stick in quite a bit because this is taking, going to be taking a lot of pushing and pulling due to wind. So I want to make sure this is really in there. Oh, I dropped it. All right. I just drilled a pilot hole. So I'm going to go in slow. Hopefully it doesn't crack. Basically, I want to try to fit this next piece in to figure out how far down this quarter has to come. You see, I didn't drill this hole yet because I know that I need to have a little bit of flex here. So I'm gonna try to fit this next board in and uh, hopefully it all works out. I'm probably gonna end up putting uh, another piece on the back all the way across. Because sometimes there's just uh, nowhere for nowhere for these to attach to, I guess. You got a big joint here and a small space to really tie this down. So I think uh, not right now, but... Well, like every other? Like a piece of wood in between the frame? Well, no. All of them. Because look, I can screw through here and get this one locked in, but then this will still be kind of... Yeah. It's stuck a, quite a bit, but if you get... If you get something pushing on here pretty good it'll pop right out so i mean i have extra wood i might as well use it so that's what i'm going to use it for for now i'm just going to go around the around with just the siding i can come back later and put that back that backer piece on there so i could really uh screw it down i'm just using this to get about halfway up i want it to look nice that would be 18 inches here I love that you got green screws. Yeah. That was such a good idea. I know. See, it wouldn't look right if they were like these bright, <laughs> these bright tan screws.
looks fantastic, doesn't it? Look, I have things attached to me. <laughs> uh. Okay, so it's muddy. So, okay, cool. <sighs> Ta da! We did it. <laughs> yep. So the weather didn't really help us out, but we managed to do it anyway. And I think it looks nice. It looks really pretty. So I'm not done with the door area yet. I still have to put on the door and then I have to fill in those tiny little gaps. So I need to cut a piece of wood once I figure out exactly how I'm gonna do this. I can't believe we did that with the rain. Yeah. It worked out. I started putting some weeds right here just so I could step on them. Yes. A little bit too late, but it helped. So now if you do an earthquake test, this thing is solid. You see that? Did not move. I really do love this. This is so exciting. Nice. Good job, babe. Thank you.